Welcome back to Pushing the Envelope with Premiere Pro. Let's see what some of these approaches to aspect ratio look like when they're applied to a real project. So on the movie 6 Below, we shot with the Red Dragon at 6K for eventual delivery to a number of different aspect ratios and formats. After we'd locked the edit, we graded every frame we used at its original 6K resolution, allowing us to reframe the entire movie for a number of different aspect ratios after it had been graded. So here we can see that we have a 6K asset. Uh, this was a 6144 by 2592. The entire timeline is full of 6K assets here. And then this timeline is used as source for other timelines that reframe for different aspect ratios. So this is our theatrical release that was actually slightly wider than 235. And then this is the same aspect ratio when letterboxing is applied to make a Blu-ray. We're also required to deliver a full 16 by 9 version, which was a whole separate aspect ratio to frame for. And the most unique requirement was our Barco Escape format. So Barco Escape was three scope 2K images side by side, giving it a 7 to 1 aspect ratio and a final resolution of 6144 by 858. Many times this does not give us the height to do what we wanted to do. So our solution to that was to scale down the image and then stretch the sides separately to fill in the gaps. The reason we can get away with stretching the image this way is due to how the screens are arranged from the audience's perspective. We can take a closer look at how this works by recreating it in 3D in After Effects. Uh, we start with our full 6K source asset. You can see that there's the microphone on the top and things like that, because that doesn't really matter. Because the first thing we're going to do is apply our mats and our framing guide. Now, this tells us that the bottom of his face is going to be out of the image. And we can't just tilt down or we'll lose our other character in the background. Also, he is sitting right at a screen boundary, so he'll be right there in the scene, which is less than ideal. So the way that we deal with that is that we scale the image down to allow us to get more of his face and keep him away from the scene. But now we have these black areas right here that we need to cover with imagery. So the way we deal with that is we mask the left edge and we stretch that to cover, and we mask the right edge and we stretch that to cover. But that leaves us with highly distorted edges on our project that should be visually obvious except for one thing. When the audience is viewing this in the theater, the screens are tilted steeply towards them have the effect of compressing the image from their perspective, which offsets the stretching that we did, leaving it a fairly normal feel. Even after this is done, we have the opportunity to tilt the camera up or down by changing the anchor point to get the exact framing that we need to keep everything in the picture at once. That was admittedly quite complicated, but we can create that result in Premiere using nothing besides the crop and motion effects. Here in the timeline, we accomplished this in three layers, with the center, the left, and the right screens each having separate crop and motion settings applied. And these were presets that we could apply at different settings, like 75%, 90%, etc. Another way to do this would be to use a single layer with a number of transforms applied. And these could all be set as a single preset as well for, once again, 90%, 75%, things like that. Uh, different sizes that you want to scale out to, you need to stretch the sides slightly differently for each of those things. This particular sequence is actually taller than the final delivery. That gave me the ability to have a soft mat to allow me to see what we may or may not be missing from other parts of the image, and then later, it gets dropped into another sequence that actually trims off the parts that we aren't using. Also, it can be useful to have the screen boundaries marked so we make sure we didn't land anything important right at the scene between the two screens. Now, you probably won't be creating a 7 to 1 project anytime soon, but this example just illustrates how powerful some of Premiere Pro's basic effects tools are when used in creative ways. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.